humping all the other dogs. Please be my friend. I hope you guys But um, I got a question for you guys. Is it bad that when someone passes on my attempts to hit on them, I actually think better of them as a person? Like, good for you, man. You dodged one hell of a See, unlike some people, I like to be self-aware of my grade level. For example, when I was a teenager, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. If you don't think you know anyone with borderline personality disorder, trust me, you do. We are those sickeningly sweet people who magically turn bad shit crazy out of nowhere. It's, it's bad. When I'm in a relationship with someone for an extended period of time, I can see as the realization slowly sets in that they booked an all-expenses-paid trip to the Hotel California. <laughs> they can check out whenever they like, but they can never leave. <laughs> no, um, just keep going down Natalie's memory lane. Um, the first dick I ever saw was my father's. <laughs> I will forever be haunted by the memory of that sad, dying penis. <laughs> it's okay, I'm mostly over it. But yeah, see, when I was in high school, my dad died, and so when he was sick, I helped take care of him. And there was this one time I was giving him a sponge bath, and I couldn't help but just stare at it. Like, it was so small and limp and non-threatening. I don't know, I guess it just made me really ill-prepared for the first time I attempted to have sex. I, uh, I was with this cute boy, and we were lying on a futon under the covers. The mood was very romantic, this horns creak on the leash, softly played in the background. <laughs> he grabbed my hand and guided it down to his cock. I was a little surprised. Um, he looked at me and said, is everything okay? I said, oh no, I'm fine, I'm fine. He said, well, don't you like it? I said, no, I do, I do, it's just... I don't know. My dad's was so different. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't get laid and I never spoke to that kid again. But given my experience, I think I would make an amazing gold digger. <laughs> so I hit this big milestone a little while ago. It turned out great for me. Yeah, I was off with my happy pills for over a year. It's awesome, right? I always thought I would feel like Zach Braff's character in the Garden State, you know? Just like screaming into the abyss, collecting my tears in a jar, trying to be able to feel love again. That's not what happened, no. Instead of finding myself, I took to binge drinking and not showering for weeks at a time. So I guess you could say I'm not Hollywood depressed. I'm more uh, what I like to call middle America depressed. You guys might be able to relate. It's the kind of depressed for putting my bra on and taking the trash to the curb to big night out. And my house slowly turns into one of those extreme cases on borders. And then eventually my dogs start walking themselves because even they have given up on me. It is sad. No, um, let's see. Yeah, so uh, the events from uh, trying to get laid that one time may or may not have led me to date women. Uh, and like a lot of lesbians, I really like the show The L Word. Um, in case you don't know what The L Word is, it's a scripted drama about the life and loves of these beautiful ladies living in Los Angeles. And there's this one scene that my girlfriend and I found particularly sexy. In this scene, one of the characters Carmen is peeing on the toilet, and Jenny comes over and she straddles her and pees right to me. And you're thinking, that's really fucking hot. <laughs> but it totally is. They're like friends, they're depressed, they're so naturally we figure you have to try this one. I can safely tell you that the worst time to try this is to eat out of a rental drink, load it up on Gatorade and coffee. <laughs> We thought it would be great, so we rushed into the truck stop bathroom, and she pulled her pants down to her ankles, and I moved my dress to the side and climbed on top. We locked eyes, and we immediately realized two things. That we had read this decision, and that now there was no turning back. I watched in horror as the urine pulled on her thighs, and then slowly dripped all the way down to her feet. It was like a broken fire hose spraying both of us. And while neither of us achieved orgasm, we did both see some pretty cool I Heart Kentucky pajama pants. 
Because there is nothing worse than walking around a Kentucky truck stop bathroom and knowing you are the most disgusting. <laughs> so um, I found out recently that I'm not even one of those hip gays. I'm lame. Because my girlfriend, she wanted to try having a little size of strap on. I was like, I got you, babe. So I went back and I stood it up and came out all ready to go. And she looks at me like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I want to have a dick on me, not in me. I want those leather holster straps so tight that my thighs look like holiday hands. I want the power that comes with having a big dong and also feeling safe in the fact that I can report down the mountain at any given time. So I'm at an age now where a lot of my friends and people I grew up with are starting to get married. And thanks to social media, we all get to hear about it. I get it, they're in love and they want to share their story. But the thing that I just can't stand is that everyone seems to say the same thing. Well, you know what that is? It's that they just can't believe they get to marry their best friend. You see that. But it's like, what if I just want to marry the person who fucks me the best? Or what if I never thought I would get this lucky and find someone this rich who thinks I'm <laughs> So I guess what I'm saying is I think we should all be a little bit more realistic before we post on Facebook. So here's my suggestion. You guys can take any piece that you think fits to your life. I'm thrilled. Tomorrow I get to marry Tom, a man who makes me laugh, has decent credit, and he only hit me that one time. But we both agree I probably deserve it. Don't worry, guys. I'm not super jaded. I am actually in love. watching was at the highest of its low, where we got to watch everyday people being thrust into the unknown, like the survivor, I think that's right. or we got to just enjoy them being the miserable creatures they are, like on Honey Boo Boo. You can admit it, you all enjoy judging them. Well guys, I want to make See, I knew that fame and fortune were only a drunken bar fight or pregnancy scare away. So while other kids were working really hard in school trying to become doctors and marine biologists, I was just trying to trick a 16-year-old boy to get me pregnant. <laughs> and when that show rejected me, I begged MTV to make me into the first pregnant break dancer. Wow. <sighs> Believe it or not, I was shut down again. So you might be asking yourselves, Natalie, just what have you been doing these last 10 years? Well, guys, I've been building my reality TV resume. I have a guaranteed panic attack on every single leg of The Amazing Race. <laughs> I'm a shoe in for the real world. My alcohol conditioning has made my blackout to vomit ratio excessive. So I'm an easy lay without any mess of me. And after many years of trapping feral cats, I have guaranteed that I've caught toxoplasmosis, which has led my Bravo Housewives tagline to be. <laughs> I've got the attitude of a Mally cat with a coke problem, and I do it all in heels. <laughs> Don't worry guys, if none of those amazing TV shows take me on, there's one show that will always take somebody like me, and that is the 6 o'clock news. <laughs> Probably in hand. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>